I guess this episode represents kind of an apology because I realized that I was presenting all these topics that are related to the physical aspect of playing the trumpet and that just isn't consistent with how I believe trumpet playing works. Again, the bottom line is performing is the art of imagining something so vividly that your body does it. It is not, performance is not the art of trying to tell every part of your body what to do. Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan's Trumpet. Today, what I want to share with you is a bit of a confessional because I realized as I was looking at the content of the channel so far that in some ways I kind of betrayed my core values as a teacher and a trumpet artist by presenting what I did first. And what, <laughs> what I mean by that is the first things that I shared with you had to do with the physical aspects of playing the horn. I think that information is really helpful and it's been helpful for me. But if I were to diagnose one challenge or issue facing us as a community of trumpet players, it's that we often practice backwards. We tend to believe that the physical aspect of playing is what matters the most. And that just isn't true. And of course, Arnold Jacobs did a brilliant job of teaching this. It's backwards to believe that we can tell each part of our body what to do independently. It simply doesn't work. And for me as a player, the more I, f I, I fall into um, believing that the foundation of technique is physical, the more trouble I get myself into. Not that that stuff doesn't matter. It's just that it's secondary or even tertiary to the process of playing the horn. In fact, I have kind of a funny story about my own arrogance as a student. A few years after I finished my master's degree, I'm studying with David Hickman, I had an opportunity to attend the Rafael Mendez Brass Institute, which if any of you have not attended that yet, you absolutely have to. It's an incredible event, incredibly affordable, where you get to spend a week with many of the leaders in our field in the United States. So this was years after I had graduated from Hickman's studio and I went to one of his master classes at this institute. And he said something that I'm a little bit embarrassed about what my initial response was to it. Because he was giving this master class and he said, when I'm about to play something, I visualize it so vividly that the whole building could fall down around me and I wouldn't know it until I finished the phrase. And I remember thinking to myself like, oh, come on, he's exaggerating. And then this little teeny voice inside invited me to a, a little more humility. And I thought to myself, wait a second, what if he's serious? And that was honestly a turning point for me as a trumpeter because it, it just struck me. He wasn't kidding. He, was, he pictured the sound, everything about what he wanted. He pictured it so clearly that that was the only thing in the world to his conscious awareness. That that implied that then that, that, that performance was conjuring up this clear vision that you want and then surrendering to it. I think that's just so spot on. And I think it might be the most important thing for us to understand as trumpet players. And then I stumbled across a quote from Arnold Jacobs uh, where he says that the single most powerful tool for improving our brass playing quickly might be solfege. I cannot tell you the number of times that a student has come to me struggling with something that they believe is a technical issue and we were able to get to the root of the problem, which is very rarely technique in my experience. Most of the time, it's actually hearing. 
if I can't imagine vividly exactly what I want as an artist in terms of rhythm, pitch, and style or phrasing, if those things aren't alive in me, then there's very there's a much reduced chance of my body actually doing what I need it to do because it has question marks. It won't know how to respond to what we're doing as artists. When the physical aspect of playing isn't working the way I want it to, what's really happening is that my creative signal is not clear enough to coordinate my body. Or another way of thinking of it is my body has question marks about what I actually want it to do. And that has to do with hearing and that has to do with precise hearing. For this reason, I have become a solfege aficionado. So for me, solfege has been this incredibly important thing. Literally everything I practice, I practice using solfege. That might be with uh, practicing um, like a Chickowitz flow study. I will sing while I finger Sol, Fi, Sol, La, Sol, Mi, Do. It might be like the Goldman Etudes. Do, 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 ti, 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 do, 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 so, 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 la, ti, do, re, do, ti, la, ti, do. It, it, it might be something more uh, advanced in terms of solfege, like, um, like a Charlie A etude. Sol, number four. Sol, la, sol, do, do, re. Mi, fa, mi, fa, sol, fa, mi, fa, re, mi, do, re. La, do, ti, la, sol, fi, mi, fi, sol, la, sol. And you can hear, like, I'm not a singer. I'm not working on vocal quality, but I know if, if I can self-edge in my mind with a vivid sense of the pitch, I can trust that my body will follow suit. Maybe we're looking at Charlie A number two. Sol, me, re, do, sol, te, le, sol. Sol, fa, sol, me, sol, do, me, re, la, ti. Sol, me, re, do, sol, te, le, re. Fa, me, fa, sol, sol, re, do. Maybe I'm working on the Steven Sonata. So fa so re fa la fa la so do la fa do re mi fa so la do mi re mi do fa so ti so do re mi fa mi fa so do la fa la do do mi fa la so do mi do do. Solfege as a as a as a creative signal for what we do on the trumpet is just stunningly powerful. This applies equally to jazz. So if I'm working on on lines in jazz, then I'll then I will practice solfege them. I'm solfeging. When I practice, I, I practice solfeging everything. That doesn't mean that I'm solfeging when I perform, but I find that solfege is a stunningly powerful tool for coordinating the body. 
whatever we can imagine and hold a space for vividly inside our our creative selves, that is what will come into being on the trumpet in the physical realm. I think it's what's the most magic to me still about music. It blows my mind that inner shifts show up in real ways in the physical world in the form of sound. And practicing with solfege has been unbelievably important for me in developing the ability to do that. I guess this episode represents kind of an apology because I realized that I was presenting all these topics that are related to the physical aspect of playing the trumpet and that just isn't consistent with how I believe trumpet playing works. Again, the bottom line is performing is the art of imagining something so vividly that your body does it. It is not, performance is not the art of trying to tell every part of your body what to do. Performance is an art of trust fall, is what I often say to my students. It's literally like that game, if you've ever played that, where you just fall backwards into the arms of friends and you have to trust that they'll catch you. That's what performing is. Performing is, is understanding that if you really vividly imagine what you want in terms of rhythm, pitch, and style, and if you imagine that so deeply you can feel it coming alive in your body, then you can unhesitatingly surrender the mechanics to that creative signal, and it'll work. <laughs> 